Hello everyone, and welcome to the third and final part of our 4K production series. If you haven't watched them already, be sure to check out parts one and two of this series beforehand, as the decisions you make through every stage is connected. That said, in this part, we're going to talk about the more advanced possibilities of color grading workflows and finishing your project for 4K delivery. We won't get into actual color grading technique, but we will discuss the technical and logistical challenges of working between the edit and grading sessions, along with how best to ensure everything works smoothly. As discussed in part two, while the fastest way to produce content is straight in the editor, a bigger, more complex project will probably want to involve a separate color grading pass. This is almost guaranteed for television or film production. Our project is going to start with the assumption that you'll be offline editing with proxy files. Proxy files are copies of the original footage with lower resolution, lower bitrate, and a less complex codec that's easier to play back in the edit. Proxies are used in order to work much faster, and in the end are replaced by either the original assets or higher quality versions, which is what we'll be doing here. We'll start in DaVinci Resolve, where we can import all of our camera media. Make sure your project is set to the correct resolution and frame rate, and if you want, manually adjust your clips with higher frame rates to the playback frame rate, giving you slow motion. Select all your clips, go to File, and click Media Management. Resolve makes it extremely simple to generate proxies, so you'll transcode all media, choose your video format, in this case ProRes 422 Proxy, and then choose your resolution. Now, it's a little easier to work with if you render at source resolution, because you don't need to worry about resizing media when you replace the proxies, but editing in a lower resolution will be much faster. That said, since we're encoding to a low bitrate proxy format, it'll still be easier to edit this in 4K as opposed to the original files. As you can see, Resolve automatically tells you how much of a reduction in file size you're achieving with proxy generation, which makes it a lot easier to transport files between editors or even use on a much smaller hard drive. Now obviously, you will still keep your original files, but you shouldn't need to touch them until the edit is complete. With the proxies generated, you can bring them into Premiere to begin the edit. You can add visual effects and titles here, but make sure to keep them on separate tracks. Before you even attempt to bring the project over to Resolve, you must picture lock the edit. As a precaution, I highly recommend simplifying the main camera footage to one track. Now, duplicate your timeline to prevent any changes or mistakes. If you maintain the source resolution in your proxies, you shouldn't have to think much about your timeline settings, but if you did reduce the resolution to, say, 1080p, Premiere has a very convenient way to handle this. Adjust your duplicated timeline settings to 4K. Your video will now appear small, but if you select your entire track and hit Scale to Frame Size, the clips will internally rescale to 4K, but remain at 100% in the clip attributes. This is important because it prevents any scaling issues from cropping up when transferring this edit back to Resolve. If you're working with any effects or image tracks, you should remove them from the edit entirely. Don't worry, we'll bring them back soon enough. By the way, we won't be getting into it in this video, but if you're interested in sending your audio to a dedicated sound mixer using software like Pro Tools, this is also when you would prep your audio by separating tracks and exporting audio stems. Next, you'll export an XML file from Premiere and import that back into the same project you made earlier in Resolve. The program will conform the clips you imported earlier to the cuts on the XML timeline. Now you can color correct and grade your footage with much finer control than you would have in Premiere. Doing it this way allows you to manage your source footage separately from your edit. If you originally mastered in only 1080p, you can go back to your source files and create a 4K version or even an HDR version for future delivery. At this point, we should probably talk about monitoring. Color grading is as much a science as it is an art, so if you're going to put this much effort into the project, you'll want to ensure your grade is done as accurately as possible. Monitors suitable for grading run the gamut in terms of capability and budget, but at the very least, you should use monitors that cover 100% of the color space you're delivering to. For our example, we're going to use this 27-inch NEC 4K UHD desktop monitor, which is sufficient for Rec. 709 going to the web. You have the option of either connecting the display to the GPU for a traditional dual monitor setup, or using separate video playback cards like the Blackmagic DeckLink Studio 4K. The advantage here is full resolution playback on a dedicated card to a separate monitor with support for a wide range of video standards. 
Remember that Shogun Inferno from part one? We can repurpose it here as an HDR grading display if we want to master this project in high dynamic range. Because we're dealing with the original 10-bit files, it's a good example of the kind of remastering you can do at a later point based on how you plan the production. So when you're done grading, go to the Delivery tab in Resolve and choose Premiere XML as your delivery format. Choose your destination directory and make sure to render individual clips. You'll want to encode to a high quality format such as ProRes 422HQ or better, depending on your destination medium, and you can choose Render at Source Resolution unless you need to downscale. Add to Render Queue and you can begin rendering. When that's done, go back to Premiere and import the freshly generated XML file from Resolve. This will import a new timeline, along with the clips that Resolve just rendered. The benefit here is that instead of rendering all the source footage with grading implied, you're only rendering the clips you've used for the duration they run in the timeline. So in reality, you're rendering exactly what you've used in the edit. Now that we've reopened the edit in Premiere, you can combine the elements of your original picture lock timeline with the color graded version generated by Resolve. You should check over the video to make sure everything lines up properly and that any transition effects are still working. If you had your audio mixed by a sound mixer, you'll also recombine those tracks at this stage. Also, if you do want to integrate some of your NLE's built-in effects in your edit, there's nothing stopping you from combining workflows to some extent. For the final export, you'll need to know what your destination medium is. Most people are going to create deliverables for the web, DVD, Blu-ray, or TV. Before we go to any of these formats, we're going to create a mezzanine file that can act as our final master before any actual deliverables are made. You can think of this as the highest quality version of your finished video. For nearly all of those formats, the color space, resolution, and dynamic range are identical. While DVD only requires a slight color space and resolution change, which is handled automatically by any commercial encoder. So for our video, we'll want to create a 4K master file. From Premiere's export window, you'll want to choose a format with little to no compression. High-end films will likely use an uncompressed format, such as DPX, but the majority of masters will be in a lightly compressed format, such as 10-bit ProRes or DNX HR. Below this, you can easily make sure your frame rate and resolution match your project with the Match Source button. For a master file, I'd recommend turning on maximum depth, 16-bit rendering, and maximum render quality. Unless you're producing a full-length feature film, chances are you won't have to worry about theatrical distribution. For short films, it is possible to create what is known as a digital cinema package, or DCP, within Premiere. Though in general, it's recommended to go to a dedicated mastering facility to do this, as DCPs should be checked against industry standard authoring and monitoring tools. However, many festivals, broadcasters, and even some distributors are more accepting these days of file-based delivery. With your master file created, you can now deliver to almost any format you want. Adobe Media Encoder provides an easy way to do this with presets designed around destinations like DVD, Blu-ray, mobile, and web, but let's use a custom H.264 preset as an example. Under Format, we'll choose H.264. Jump down to the video settings and hit Match Source if you haven't already. For upload to a website like YouTube or Vimeo, you'll want to give your video a fairly high bitrate as these sites will re-encode your video once again, losing more quality. Switch to VBR2 Pass and set your bitrate to 25 to 30 megabits per second for 1080p and about 50 to 60 megabits per second for 4K. For early drafts of your edit, you can use the CBR or VBR1 Pass modes to create a fast file, as quality tends to matter less. 2 Pass mode allows the encoder to analyze the video once and then encode it the second time around using the data it collected earlier. This is particularly useful if you need to hit a specific file size, like you would on a DVD or Blu-ray version. Lastly, if you're interested, other compression software such as Sorensen Squeeze also offers presets and alternative compression schemes that might be able to bring your file size down or retain more quality at the same file size. And that's it. If you're publishing to the web, all that's left is to upload your video. While we've tailored this video to walk you through the basics of 4K video, you can apply this knowledge to just about any production. From choosing a camera, to editing your footage, and finally, to delivering a finished product. Not only is 4K production possible, but it's far more accessible than ever before. From b &H, this is Doug. See you next time.